Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Rodeo Time, the podcast. We've got your man. Um, I know the, 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 the person you've all been waiting to hear from, greatest bar of all time, Dale Brisby, is in the house. Also got J.B. Mooney here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> We're going to talk to him about uh, the NFR coming up. We're going to talk to him about these recent injuries, these season-ending injuries that he's had. So we're going to find out that. We're going to find out how he almost died. Mm-hmm. And uh, after the podcast, we're going to sign some posters, limited edition. It's the third round of posters. And um, so if you want to find out when those posters, signed caps drop, go to text JB Poster to 940-353-0890. So text me that, and uh, I'll let you know when that stuff gets dropped online. We better thank our sponsors, American Hat and Total Feeds, the two sponsors that, that we share. That we share. Yes. Who else you got? Do you, you want to give me Texas, a Texas pl- Wrangler, uh, WF Sam Auctioneers, Monster, Yeti, uh, Bill Fick Ford. Um, you got a you got a bunch. I got a few. I kind of look like a billboard. That's one question that we didn't answer. That somebody did ask. How do you get sponsors? Oh, uh, you let your ride and do the talking. I was about to say you, they call you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You don't call them. <laughs> yeah. That's when you get the best deal anyway, when yeah. they call you. Yeah. For sure. The, because that's when you know they want you. So check out JB sponsors. Check out Delbrisby.com for the JB merch. And now on to the podcast. Donnie Ray Daytona, Leroy Gibbons. As always, joining us in the house. <laughs> You can roll that out to you. Hey, don't let these raggedy clothes fool you. I say raggedy clothes. I'm actually wearing JB's shirt. It's a nice shirt. Yeah. What bull was that? Wasn't this at... uh, Riding solo. Wasn't this in uh, Oklahoma? Guthrie. Guthrie? Yeah. During during last year? Mm Mm-hmm. How'd that go? I rode him. Yeah. And they marked me like 86 points, and every time he's been ridden after that they've been like 91 on him so you're welcome yeah maybe you put him on the map had they been 91 on him before then no i yeah. think i'm pretty sure i was the first one to ride him yeah you were the first one to ride him mm-hmm. dang that was a bad of the bone pitcher too that was was that towards a little bit towards the end of the ride yeah i was getting a little strung <laughs> out there <laughs> You're putting that old brace to the to the test. God, what's that guy? Wayne something took that picture. I think. I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was a cool. <laughs> I just saw it on social media. I was like, "Yep, that's the next poster." So, how excited are you to sign five hundred of those? Uh, pumped. <laughs> <laughs> you just stay hey, made. I do. I do got a, a picture for a. Another picture for a shirt. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? I saw it the other day and screenshotted it. Are you wearing clothes in it? Yeah. Okay. That's on a bull. <laughs> okay. At a rodeo. <clears throat> that Cheyenne, actually. That's a pretty good one. Oh, yeah. Is it the one from this summer? Yeah. Right before I was getting my, right before I got knocked out. I think I think I know the picture you're talking about. Yeah. This is oh, when dang. you know you're I don't think this is the one that you're thinking. <laughs> That's when you know you're about to get your <laughs> hit that in the looks face. on your face. <laughs> that bull, though. I don't know. It's not the one I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> We're, you're thinking, was it like a Red Bull? Yeah, and he's, and like, he's like way up in the air. You yeah. can see the back of the chutes. Mm-hmm. That dang. is cool. Yeah. Did you? This is just a, That's just a, a look of I'm getting ready to get hit in the face. Yeah. <laughs> and I did. Yep. See, I even kind of had it turn. Like, yeah. Right, do you feel like so? Webb and Tuck were there. Do you feel like? Are you able to? Does it affect you who's fighting bulls? I don't worry about it. But yeah. you know, if they're out there, it's yeah. Those two guys are there. Then you right. Get on mountain line. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, we, uh, we also have the Cody Webster shirt. Did you yeah, see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's got. That's kind of cool. I bought a cow from Webster. Fighting cow? Half blood. Really? Fighting cow, yeah. I'm on, Half blood. I'm going to put her with the JBDB herd. Breed <laughs> <laughs> her to a bucking bull. <laughs> so is she half commercial cow or half fight uh, bucking cow? Out of a Roy Carter, Bremer cow, and a fighting bull. Oh, so she's half bucking cow. Half or a half Bremer and a fighting bull. Dang. She's mean. So she, I mean it's it, the one he posted the other day for sale. Yeah. That they were fighting and she was yeah. trying to hook. I bought her. Dang. That's funny. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to heat up the JBDB herd. Dude, I got yeah. no problem. Man, that bu- that that calf that uh, that Brandon keeps sending us updates on, that joker's doing the deal. Oh, yeah. Once he figures the first couple jumps out, he'll be right. Do you, you think you didn't message me back on my name idea? Oh, yeah. Wait, what, were you, what was your name idea? I said we should name him Bofa. Yeah. And he said, well, what's that mean? <laughs> I, I didn't even get a heart or nothing back. Well, I'm sorry. I forget to reply a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's one Got kid. Him. There, there's one kid on here that messages me like every other day. First time to see if I can get a reply. And yeah. then two days later, second attempt for a play. He's up to like 32 right now. <laughs> yeah. I like that same kid. Same People kid. do that to me in my texting app. They they do that same thing. They try to get me with that. First day, seeing if Dale will reply. Second day. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, you finally got my attention, and you just want to talk about how many days it's been? Let's talk about something interesting. Well, I want to see how committed he is. <laughs> day, day, day 1374 it's been 24 years <laughs> like on interstellar oh geez how long has it been since you've been on a bull to oh, fort madison iowa whenever that was about right at six weeks now yeah are gosh gonna, darn are you gonna get on something before oh Vegas? yeah 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 i'll probably go back to getting on practice bulls a couple weeks how many do you want to like? Mental, do you have a number of how many you want to get on before you go? Nope. Till it feels right. Till it just feels good. Just get on, get on, get on. Like you might get on one or two and it feels good, and then or you might get on six. What What's the most you've been on practice bulls like? In one day. Well, in the last like three, four, five years. Uh, it just depends. Uh, shoot, I don't know. What's the most you've been on that you can remember ever in one day? Yeah, it was 10 or 12. 10 or 12? Yeah. Because I, I always had 10 to 15 head of bulls standing at home. So if I rode bad, it wasn't nothing for me to run them all in there and get on. Well, since we're talking about you being healthy, that's it's just good to get it on record. Everyone, JB is healthy. Yeah, I'm not dying. <laughs> Jeez, I'm, not, I'm not missing the NFR. <laughs> And dude, there'll be people that like I didn't even know they knew what rodeo was. Like someone I've like I've had like acquaintances around town. They're just like, "Hey man, how's JB doing?" Like, Did they pull the plug? <laughs> that's what <laughs> JB well, is they, fine, y'all. They made it out like I was dying. Know, yeah, yeah. And which I didn't tell anybody. I was going to the hospital. I didn't go to the next morning. And. Yeah, you were staying in a room with Tuck, huh? Tuck, and he was asleep, so I wasn't going to wake him up. So I went to the front desk and asked that lady if she could run me to the hospital. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to bother. My, I don't want to inconvenience you with my lacerated well, kidney. <laughs> well, it was like four fifteen, four thirty in the morning. Yeah, and so they take me to a little bitty hospital there in Fort Madison, and they're asking me all these questions, and I bull stepped on my back. Well, do you have any marks? I don't know what's on my back. I can't see my back. <laughs> and so they pulled my shirt up, and they're like, well, you don't have any marks. I was like, I don't bruise a whole lot. I said, I'm telling you, something's not right. And <laughs> I've been in these places before. <laughs> they're asking all these questions, you know, are you allergic? I said, I'm not allergic to anything. I'm not allergic to the dye. Let's do this. So they run the dye through there, and they come back. Sir, we're life flighting you to Iowa City. I was like, do what? They said, yeah, you've uh, lacerated your kidney, and we're not set up for that kind of trauma. I said, okay, it's getting real. And 
It's so funny. then I'm you getting beat them on. to the punch. You were like, I already know what the dye is. I'm not allergic to it. Put it in me. So then they're they're rolling me out there to the chopper to fly me to dang Iowa City. And I said, Well, I guess I better text Tuck and Samantha, because Samantha and Jagger was were, were in Washington State with the R V because I was supposed to fly back there that day. I text her first and said, Hey, I don't believe I'm gonna make that flight back. Their life flight made Iowa City. And then I text Tug. I'm like, hey, they're they're flying me to Iowa City. I lacerated my kidney whenever you wake up, just to let you know where I'm at. He thinks you're in the next bed. <laughs> yeah. Why is JB texting me? And oh, my gosh, he's not over there. <laughs> well, he said when he woke up, he looked around. He didn't look at his phone yet. And he looked around, and he saw my hat laying over there, my buckle and everything. But I was gone. And he, he thought said, you were well, just he's like, smoking well, a cigarette. Well, that's weird. You know, he leaves his hat and his buckle in here. And then he looked at his phone and was like, why didn't you wake me up, man? <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to bother you. You're sleeping pretty good. <laughs> Samantha wakes up. And she's like, what's wrong? I said, the last ride of McKinney. What's that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you when I get to Iowa City. And <sighs> But by the time I got there, the bleeding had stopped. So they just kept me for a day and a half just checking my blood yeah. count. And he came in Saturday morning and. Said, as long as everything looks good, it, when we take your blood at lunch, we'll turn you loose. I said, all right. And they swapped nurses on me about 9 o'clock that morning, and they hadn't really let me get up and walk around. They finally come and took the IVs out and everything. I said, can I get up and walk around? She's like, yeah. I said, well, where, uh, where's the front doors of this joint? <laughs> she said, well, you're not supposed to go to the front doors. I said, well, I'm going to smoke cigarettes. She said, I didn't hear that, and the elevators are right that way down the hall. I said, I'm going to go take a walk. <laughs> Golly. They really do not like you smoking around the hospital in Iowa City <laughs> because every 10 foot, there's a no smoking sign. They just parked it under one of them. I finally just sat down beside it. Yeah. I think I got that Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I came back in. That lady was like, how was your walk? Wonderful. <laughs> feel fantastic. I like how... You know, you had told me that when you got to the second hospital that they were quizzing you the same way. Oh, yeah. You know, like as if you 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 just came in on a helicopter. Obviously, he's not just a hypochondriac yeah. who thinks, you know, like you don't take a helicopter ride for nothing. But it's funny to me just like they just don't realize how experienced of a patient they're dealing with. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, Samantha was all worried. She's like, I hate for you to have to stay over there by yourself. I was like. Why? Yeah. I mean, right now they're bringing me pain medicine every four hours, and I'm watching uh, Law and Order. It's a pretty good deal. <laughs> if y'all would quit calling me and text me like I'm dying, I'd be doing a lot better. Yeah. I think that whoever chose the caption or the headline on the post that said, because um, it was pretty close to the end of the season. It's yeah. like three weeks away. So it's like season-ending injury, you know, and nobody – Everybody thinks the season ends at the NFR, NFR, but it ends October 1st yeah. in the PRCA. And uh, and then you got, you know, two and a half months for the NFR, or two full months for the NFR. So season ending sounds really bad if it's June. Yeah. But <laughs> when, when it's September 10th and you got three weeks left, yeah. season ending, like, I mean, you could stump your toe and decide to stay at the house. Technically, it's season ending. Well, that's what I – the only – I missed a couple of rodeos I was entered in. But I missed the Extreme Bulls finals. That was the one I really wanted yeah. to go to. That and then the Pendleton. But I, that's the only ones I really missed. Yeah, Pendleton which would have been neat. I had it. You know, NFR already showed up, so it right. really wasn't. And that's what they kept. Uh, I was in at first trip to the NFR in jeopardy. You know, nobody. <laughs> and I was like, I finally <laughs> tweeted back. Like I replied back to it and was like, I'm only going to be out six weeks, people. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, I'll be getting on bulls a month before the NFR. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I heard this quote talking about, like, people talking about you and everything, and it made me think of you. It's it's in a song. It's It says, uh, there's people, it's NF, y'all y'all know NF? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's people going to tell you you won't ever make it. Then when you do, they'll say they knew you were going places. Uh, that's just how it works. Next thing, you'll be overrated hearing people say they miss the old you it's crazy ain't it that's what the, the lyrics are but it's it's like you're never gonna make it and then when you do it's like nah, i knew he would make it <laughs> oh, i yeah. always have yeah. and then 
And then there comes a point where, ah, oh, he's overrated. I miss the old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like his original stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he needs to retire. Yeah. There's a there's a country artist that I know that he he put some music out on a on a label, but he had already cut the record. And like he did it when he when he was on his own. Yeah. Well, this label is like, Well, hey, just put it out with us and we'll help you blow it up more. And uh but it was he was like, All right, but I'm not changing it and they were he was they were like, Okay, yeah, you can same same album. And sure enough, he puts it out, and everybody's like, "Ah, oh, I miss the old when it back when he was independent." You know, it's like, well, he—that's when he wrote this whole yeah. album. You know, like it, it is the old stuff, but they're just saying it just to say it. You know, yeah. But I feel like, in in your case, JB, like I don't know, like your brand has just exploded this year. It's like people love seeing you at these rodeos. God, it's crazy. I bet you like being there. Oh yeah, yeah. Like more laid back, you yeah. know. Just I got burnt out going to the bull riding. Fifteen years in a row, going pretty much the same thing every weekend. You know, I got burnt out, and I pretty much accomplished what I wanted to there. And only thing I wanted to do that I I haven't was make the NFL. Yeah. So yeah, has anybody? Nobody else went to PBR World Finals fifteen years in a row, did they? Yeah, Mike Lee. I think he was sixteen. Was he? Yeah. yeah. That that was one thing I was I was planning on the first of this year going trying to make both finals, so I'd make the sixteenth. But you know, I got to go into those rodeos, and I said, "Heck, it's with just it. too much fun." Yeah, I yeah. Said, I'm having way too much fun going to these. So, is it fun. is is it fun because like you get to decide where you're going to go, and you get to decide what bull? Yeah, like, what it, it's that seems like it, it. before I even went to the PBR, I rodeoed because you know, right. I worked multiple events so i was used to going to rodeos well when we turned 18 i asked jerome davis what did he think he said you want to make a living riding bulls i said yeah he said go to the pbr so that's where we went but you know now with family and everything it used to be you know when there was six or eight of us in a truck and camper going to them bull riding yep. it was like rodeo ones yep. and it was fun but you know past five six seven years all i do is fly to the event, get there, get your rental car, go to the hotel, stay in the hotel, go to the bull riding, go back to the airport, fly back home. And, yeah. you know, with Jagger, he getting bigger and things, so we bought the RV and just hit the road, stayed gone, and oh, it is a heck of a time. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Man, and, and then just, I can't imagine, like, not ever been to any events at the PBRs, you know, they just never added enough for me. But, like, just the the vibe behind the shoots compared to, like, Fort Madison, you know, just hanging out behind the shoots. Like, oh, yeah. It's just – it just – it it seems way more similar to, like, probably what you experienced in Del Rio. Oh, yeah. You know, like little versions of that all across the country, you know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you go to a rodeo and there's nothing going on after. It's not – you know, occasionally it's like parking lot's kind of dead – your buddies weren't entered that night or maybe it's a bunch of guys or everybody's got to go somewhere. And, and, and it's just, it is kind of just like a job, oh, yeah. but then there's them other ones where your next rodeo 30 miles down the road or, and you, or you got a day to hang out, you know, and, and it's just like everybody's camp there and you never know who it's going to be, oh, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, there might be this one guy who you kind of know, but then, for some reason, y'all's trail just kind of matches up, and by the end of the summer, you're almost like best friends with this random bareback rider who you ran into nine times. You know, oh yeah, it's just like you never see it coming. Like, anyway, the journey's just a little bit more. That's what has a little saying. bit more to offer, and a little less predictable, probably. Yeah, yeah. What about the bulls, though? Yeah, I feel like they probably ran some under you that was just a day off. Some of them, you know, it's just. The PBR, like, every time you nod your head, you're getting on a buck and selling a gun. Right. Over there, they still – you get on buck and selling a gun, just not every single time you nod right. your head. yeah. And being 34, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> 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 I, I kind of got a thing, and I was like, I'm getting to the age now where I, 
It might be nice to get on a 21-pointer every <laughs> once in a while. And just because you're going to one bull riding with them PBRs, that doesn't necessarily mean you're only getting on one long round, one short round bull, right? I oh, mean, like, no. it's just, a lot of them deals you get on a bunch. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're in the top 15, if they have a 15-15, if it's a three-day event, usually they'll have a long round on Friday and then a 15-15, then a long round Saturday. And then Sunday's a long round, short round. If you're in the top 15 and you make the short round, that's five bulls in three days. Yeah, five ranked bulls. <laughs> yeah, ranked bulls. Yeah. And like the 15-15, they stack the rankest bulls in the 15-15 deal. And then the short round, some of the same bulls will be in the short round on Sunday. Yep. And so at least two out of those five are going to be the bucking of some of the guns they've got. Which means like the bucking his son with guns in, in the, the world. world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not just the ones at that event, but in the world. Dang. Yeah, that um so then you go to a rodeo and most of your rodeos are one headers. Yeah. 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 It's a little easier on the body. Yeah. But there's a few like like that Reno weekend, you got on quite you got on some a few pretty juicy buckers. Yeah, I mean you still get on Cheyenne. I got on quite a few good ones there, like I don't, you know, it's just, and I went harder. I probably got on more bulls this year than I did when I was in the PBR last year. Dang. Or, you know, Dang. just for going and going and going. Right. But it's, you know, it's one here, one day, and you might get on four or five days in a row, but yeah. then you get four days off and then you go again. And I'm the type, the, the more bulls I get on, the better I, I think I ride better, the better yeah. I ride. But getting on rank some of the guns every time you nod your head, I mean, it, it wears on your body pretty good. And right. 15 years of it, there's a lot of shit wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's just kind of a broad statement. Outside of that, J.B. Mooney is healthy. Yeah, I'm healthy. He's feeling great. Feel He'll good. be at the NFR. I'm, it's going to be a great year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that it's it's interesting – you know, I've been thinking about this a lot for some reason, but like you're going into your first NFR and you think about like over the years when you go to the NFR, there's a, there's every year there's new guys that uh -huh. they're going to their first NFR and you got, you kind of watch them how they take those first couple rounds. And, you know, occasionally you have somebody like, like Ryder Wright, his first NFR, he won the first four rounds in a row. It was crazy. It was unheard of. But, like, you know, some guys may not, you know, and it's just interesting because I, I was thinking about it uh, yesterday and I was like, man, this is JB's first NFR, but it'll be nothing. It's just pressure. You know, you've been to 15 PBR World Finals getting on the rankest bulls in the world. It's a pressure situation. You've ridden in the Thomas and Mac before. You know, like, there's there's really going to be – the shoots will be a different color. Yeah. The shoots will the be a different color is the only thing. arena will be bigger. Yeah. Um, so – the only thing I'm wondering is how much they're going to find me for smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't nailed that fine down yet. Yeah. <laughs> or missing signing. I don't think they probably won't ask you to do signings this year. I think I they only do know. like one day. I think they do like If an they event. do it all. They do an event every day or something like well, that. Well, I, fi I figured they'd probably be more lax this year because of, yeah, you're right. you know, all the stuff. So I think the only thing that, like the mandatory, uh, practice for the grand entry and all that stuff i think that's like the two days before yeah there's stuff like that like they're pretty strict times. on yeah they want you to do that that'll be fun though oh yeah yeah the guy said he'd bring me a horse who did <laughs> Derek. Derek. oh Derek. yeah good yes that way you know what horse you're getting on yeah that way you don't get on a random what was it patrick smith never he did that that shoot across um it, it wasn't the grand entry but it was like they were introducing guys and it's like they black out the arena and then they got that spotlight yeah. and patrick smith was on one of those you know wound up horses and this sucker hits the brakes in the middle of the arena and did crack in two it was one of the perfs i was there i was there with kojo and uh this sucker cracked and I bucked him off like some of those horses are the flag girls been bucked off mm -hmm. um that same year, the reason why Patrick got given a hard time is because one of the flag girls does uh, rode a horse that bucked. Might have been the same horse, but when it bucked with Patrick, this sucker he was like waving, and then hits the brakes. You know these saddles were not made for you know bucking ponies, 
and then kind of cracks back. But anyway, I'm in group text yeah, with Patrick and uh, Trevor and Jeremy Walker and a few people. And anyways, everybody, somebody brought it up the other day, giving Patrick a hard time. But Well, that's the bad thing about the bull riding, taking a victory lap, because you still got your bull riding spurs on. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. hate when that happens. They're like, oh, you got to take a victory lap. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, I pulled my leg. This sucker's going to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cause, I mean, you got, you know, they're not horse riding. And then right. mine turn in. Yeah. So, and they're long shanks like that long. And the whole time I'm taking a victory lap, I'm thinking, do not hit him on the spurs. Do not hit him on the spurs. <laughs> this sucker will go. Um, So, 10 nights, 15 guys. It's going to be 150 bulls. How many of those 150 bulls do you think will – Either go also go to the PBR World Finals or like be of that caliber. There, there's quite a few of them. Uh, chiseled, he'll be yep. there. A few of HDs, it'll probably go to both. There's quite yeah. a few bulls that'll go to both. A lot of Chad's bulls will go burgers will go to both. Yeah, yeah. Cause, uh, what bull did they recently? Did or maybe it was a horse. I think it was Medicine Woman. Anyways, I remembered one of them. Bull of the year, or I thought it was it was a horse of the year, but I was thinking Bruiser, but he didn't. Reti- they didn't retire him yet, mm-hmm. did they? They did. Yeah, I yeah. I was wanting to get on him too, <laughs> but I guess I want. I guess since they retired, we well, got some of his daughters. Yeah, that's yeah. true. She keeps throwing heifers. Yeah, <laughs> so we got some of his granddaughters too. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the what's our one bull out of that is doing the business? I don't know. <laughs> what? Yeah. You have to, well, see, because we bought her when she was bred. Oh, from that guy in Georgia? Oh. No. no. She come from Paige's sale. Oh, okay. Oh. That calf was out of that when we bought him. Gotcha. And you remember how he had like five different sires? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brandon pulled the tail hair and sent it off, and it came back, but I can't remember which one he said. I'd have gotcha. to look. Gotcha. Sweet. So it, I mean, it would be this. It'll be Paige bred. Yeah. Gotcha. You know. Every all the calves that are on the ground now are out of the the bull I've got on them now though. Yeah, uh, crosswired, crosswired brother, crosswired, yeah. crosswired brother. Yeah. That's right. Cross-fade. I knew there was two of them. You got on crosswired, crosswired, and this one's crossfade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're full brothers. Yeah, but uh, he's still he's got he's got a little bit of a limp, huh? Oh, crossfade. Yeah. Not really. Really? No, he's getting around pretty good. Yeah. It looks like he's been doing work, though. He's <laughs> gained it up a little bit. Yeah. I was looking at him the other day. <laughs> good yeah. for you, man. Good for you. Been working hard. What uh, what'd you have to buy that heifer for? For From Webb, how much does that cost? A thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. Could be bread. He didn't know. <sighs> well, that's going to affect the price, Webb. So. Yeah. <laughs> He said he didn't know if she was bred. If she was, she was bred to a closing time, I think, of ball face fighting bull he's got. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to see that this big baby. one. The big old ball face? Yeah, the one. Yeah, just fighting bulls. Oh, man. So, if she is bred, then she'll cap that one, and then she'll get bred back to a bucking bull. Colt's going to have fun feeding those calves. All right. Colt, Colt did ask me the other day. I sent him to Norris's to pick up a bull. Jagger's bull, Tudoruski. Tudoruski. And he called me after he loaded him was headed back. He said, you know it's not illegal to buy bulls that aren't mean, correct? <laughs> I said, do what? He said, I said, is he that bad? He said, he is real mean. <laughs> <laughs> no fun if they're not mean. Well, I know I this, hired man. you to gentle them down. So yeah. <laughs> you fight bulls. What are you worried about? <laughs> I know. I know. You definitely got the pins for it. That's for sure. JB they're, has the yeah. the rankest set of bull pins. Those are pretty sweet. Yeah. That they're welding today. They just, were, they're welding this morning. Oof. Tell the citizens your address so they can come look at them. <laughs> oh, yeah. and then you hand feed them. <laughs> Winnebago. <laughs> yeah, it's Winnebago. Uh. I did a yeah. and I did. another load of pipes coming in today. Dang, that stuff's not cheap. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, hopefully the JB the JB merch. Um, yeah, y'all gonna have to start buying more. I got to build more <laughs> bullpens. 
Uh, I did a and a on Instagram. People ask JB questions. Um, what does he think of PRCA compared to PBR? We already answered that. Would JB get on a bronc or a bareback course? I got on bareback courses. I never got on broncs. Yeah. He used to ride bareback courses. We got some broncs and some saddles. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Is it ever too late to start bull riding? He's, he said, I'm 15. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I get that all the Man, time. Man, I'm about to. I just I, turned 19. He's I'm, like, I'm, I'm about to get my license. Is it too late? <laughs> I didn't start getting on bulls till I was 13. I mean, I rode sheep and calves and steers and junior bulls and stuff, but yeah. I, I didn't start getting on big bulls till I was 13. See, that's probably my problem. I got on when I was 12. It started too early. Yeah. <laughs> too early. Yeah. Are you going back to the PBR after you win the NFR? Negative. Negative, he says. Um, if you never became a bull rider, what do you think your job would be? Ooh, that's a good question. A bull shitter. <laughs> <laughs> so like a commentator? I have no idea. Or a, or a YouTuber with a wig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> bull man. With some shades. <laughs> um, that's a question for me. Have you ever touched Dale's wig? Is it real? That's his real hair. <laughs> like I can promise you. Uh, how many times can uh, can Willie can you sh- hot shot Willie in one day? We'll figure that out later. Do you drink alcohol? Me? No. <laughs> Did they ask me if I drink alcohol? Yes. <laughs> Just occasionally, only on days and in the why. <laughs> Who's the best um, up and comer in the PBR, in your opinion? There's quite a few of them young kids that's coming up. Boudreaux rides really good. He won the event this weekend in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, Jesse Petrie's been riding really good. There's quite a few of them riding really good, young guys. Um, for JB, outside of Dale Brisby, who is the best bull rider of all time? I may have added that second sentence. I have no idea. I watch Lane Frost tapes all the time. Mm-hmm. How long did this? Some of these questions I haven't I haven't read through these. How long did it take to get where you are today? <laughs> My whole life. Yeah, thirty four years. <laughs> <laughs> what? The? Uh, See, the way time works. <laughs> day by day, year by year. You're born, and you keep starts you, out when you're born. You live. Am keep I too on living? Am I too late to get started bull riding? I'm twenty four. No. All you got to do is nod your head. Uh, what's a day in the life? That's another one for uh, me. I got to quit. Like, what? Does it feel any different going to, like going into the NFR? Like, are you more excited? Do you feel like you're going to oh. have more fun? At the- oh, yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah. You know, it's it's a whole different – I mean, it's still Vegas, but it's a different, different atmosphere. Right, I can imagine. And I'm ready to go. I I'd bet. leave tomorrow if I could. <laughs> I bet. That's how I. Th- that's how I think I would feel for sure. Where are you staying? I have no idea. The manager takes care of all that. Samantha. You think you'll gamble while you're out? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten days. Donnie, don't hang out with JB. I, I, I want to come. <laughs> I wanna <laughs> come. <laughs> that's Leroy about gambling. <laughs> I've heard the story many times. If, uh, uh, leave your leave your wallet in the room. Why well, would I y'all, do that? Man, uh, y'all too. Because you can't win if you don't play. Yeah. Like, you don't want to play at the tables that JB plays. I'll at. watch then. Like, if I think it's maybe. You can't win if Leroy you don't was play. nervous and he was just watching. It wasn't even and my then I would, And they kept bringing them drinks faster and faster. And I'd, I'd have, I don't know, $800, $1,000 bet sitting out there. And I'd be like, Hey, play this hand. I gotta go to the bathroom. He's yeah, like, No. They hadn't even dealt the cards yet. I said, no, don't don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my money. <laughs> did you end did you end up walking away with anything that tri- that night? Yeah, a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time though. Good story. Yeah, do you feel yeah. like if you had to add up all the money you've lost and won in uh Vegas? Vegas. Oh, that's funny. Um do you think you're ahead or behind? I'm behind. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you add in the bull riding, yeah, yeah, I'm ahead. Yeah. yeah. 
That's well, why I rode so good. I'd have to pay off my debts at the <laughs> casino. The loan sharks yeah. would be behind the chutes. For- <laughs> no, just Pulling kidding. my rope. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite rodeo memory? We'll, sh- we'll make it more specific this year. Yeah, getting to take Samantha and Jagger everywhere we went. Yeah. Best advice for someone who's only rode about four bulls trying to get into the sport? Don't let go. Don't let go. Yeah. Don't buck off. Yeah. I never let go. Hang on. <laughs> Those are three or four of JB's last minute advice. That's what I tell everybody when they ask me for advice. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> Don't let go. Don't fall off. Yeah. We'll ask it a different way. I'm 21. What steps should I take if I want to ride professionally? Has he been on? I don't think so. <laughs> Get on. <laughs> well, you got to start getting on first. Kind of <laughs> see where you're at in the game. It's funny because, like, everybody's looking for JB to give, like, this Advice. secret piece. Wax of on, wax like, off, like Mr. Miyagi. Like, like some like, sort of, like, revolutionary it's piece It's pretty of simple. If you tie your hand in there, well, it will not come out. You'll figure out how to ride them because yeah. it sucks dragging <laughs> under them. And it doesn't take you long to figure that out. What's the hardest bull you felt like to ride? Bushwhacker. It says besides Bushwhacker. <laughs> Airtime. Airtime. <laughs> What's your favorite rodeo? Oh, I had a pretty good time. I had a lot of them. Uh, Ellensburg was fun, but I like Cheyenne. What's the hardest thing you've had to overcome in your career? Well, I'm a shoulder surgery. Took my free arm away from me. Yeah. And it took quite a while to get it back to where it needed to be was that this last one well i had two surgeries on mm-hmm. it once he did the second surgery on it he cleared out a lot of scar tissue and that helped me out quite from, a bit from calgary yeah. yeah if you had to name a band you're starting up what would it be <laughs> i probably can't say it <laughs> jb and the jaeger bombs yeah <laughs> the hard handle boys they talk about it. yeah do you know that me and uh, JB were in business together before you and JB were in business together? Oh, yeah? What's yeah. that? We had a ranch. A heart handle ranch. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. every time Leroy was around in a vehicle, I had the heart handle brand. He would heart handle brand your, your vehicle. <laughs> Just presenting. Stories about on Thereafter with Brian Canner and Casey Hayes. Whew, that was a fun crew. <laughs> Stories about that? Yeah, one that you can tell on a podcast. No, we were we children were, are probably listening to. We were like brothers. I mean, we pretty much lived together, traveled together, spent every day together, and I still talk to Casey. Usually, you know, just depends. Sometimes we we'll talk at least once a month. Yeah, and sometimes we'll call each other a couple of days a week. You know, and Brian, he'll call me. He he does a lot of landscaping. Uh, Casey owns his own company, so yeah. I'm the only one still strapping cattle. Where are they living now? Casey's in Kansas, and Brian's still in North Carolina. At at what ages were you traveling with them guys? Uh, we were, Cantor was 18, I was 19. Well, man, Brian and I, we traveled together from the time we were like 15, 16 years old, but we met Casey at Shawnee at the uh, youth finals, and then – like a year and a half, two years later, we were all on tour together, and we all went. So it's I was 19, Hayes was probably 20, Brown was 18, 19. Well-behaved boys, I'm oh, sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, the straight and narrow. <laughs> straight and narrow. Um, would you, would you – I mean, they're, they're, you probably traveled the most with those guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It was a good thing there was – not Snapchat and yeah, Insta face. face. Yeah, yeah. No Facebook Live or anything like that. The closest thing you had was like a Polaroid camera. Well, that <laughs> and uh, then they did have MySpace. Because that was when you that was about the time like there were still like some old school. Oh yeah, PBR guys still still cracking. Like them. you said, they beer it in was, the locker room oh, yeah. and after after the event, or you know, they rolled in the beer in the locker room and. We'd sit in there and drink beer until it was all gone. Them security guards at them buildings hated us. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, we, we just wouldn't leave. We wouldn't leave till all the beer was gone. <laughs> Why would you? That's Why? Great. 
That's yeah. what that's what I always when I first started going, I was like, man, I can save a lot of money getting drunk at the bull riding before I go to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's free here. This is awesome. I'm gonna sit in here and drink all this and then go to the bar. <laughs> song your MySpace was your uh, was your song. Ba -ba -ba -bad. <laughs> Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, when did that start? No, I don't I don't know what it was on there. I can't remember. They changed them around a few times. The Oh, I can't remember what they played. Hooligan. Yeah. I played that one for a while. It was back in when I was traveling with Brian and Casey. And uh, <laughs> Outlaw. They played that one for me before Chase Outlaw showed up. And then they just guy switched it to Bad to the Bone, and it stuck. That's what it's been ever since. That's cool. Thoughts on Jose? You're pretty good. You got a pretty good rapport with all the Brazilians. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jose? Yeah. Oh, Lemonade? Yeah. That's what I call him. <laughs> Jose Lemonade. Jose. He's a bad dude. Yeah. And it's going to be hard for him to beat that guy for a long time. It's crazy. Like, like they love you back there in the locker room. That's because I, the I don't treat them any different than anyone else. Yeah. Everybody puts their pants on the same way, you know, I do, one leg at a time, and – that that Jose, when he first showed up to the World Finals the year he won it, the first finals he got in, the first time we'd ever seen him, and he had made some pretty good bull rides that week. Well, he had Magic Train of Brennan with Matt Sharping head, and uh, it was kind of hard to ride away from your hand. And he's left-handed, that bull turns back to the right. And somebody said, what do you think? I said, well, we're getting ready to find out what he's made of right here. Yeah. And he Dang. strapped him. I was like, he's for real. <laughs> <laughs> he's not playing. Yeah. <laughs> now we know. Yep. What year was that? Ah, oh, shoot. I I want to say I can't I I can't remember what year it was. He hadn't been around three or four years. Yeah. Probably four or five. Maybe yeah. sixteen. No, I don't think it was sixteen. Fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen maybe. The year I hurt my shoulder and wasn't really yeah. technically supposed to be riding there yeah golly well i didn't do much riding i was riding when i fell off how many was it you remember bunch, a bunch bunch he won the world finals yeah the, that was pretty much his first event over here was the world finals and he won it dang I won. that's awesome i'm trying to remember and he was... didn't start getting it for all them guys is asking if it's too late he didn't start getting on bulls till he was 18 he played soccer would that have been the first year it was in uh like t-mobile yeah uh, first or second, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He played soccer? Yeah. He, he never started getting on bulls till he was 18 years old. Dang. He ain't that old now, is he? No. I tried to talk him to going back to playing soccer. <laughs> 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 he got kind of beat up somewhere, and I was like, man, soccer's way safer, dude. <laughs> you might want to think about going back to that. And he's like, no. And I was like, oh, well. And now I'm like, y'all got to deal with him. I'm going to rodeo. <laughs> uh, besides Marlboro Reds and Bud Light, what's your secret to success? Oh, chewing gum. I chew chewing gum when I ride juicy fruit. It's delicious. <laughs> original flavor. <laughs> yeah, original. How do you get into bucking bull, raising bucking bulls for rodeos? Do they want to buy some? <laughs> I will fix them up. Brooks Werner. Hit up JB. You got you got hit, hit up Dale because I'm bad about not replying. Yeah, ask Leroy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you well, I mean, if you reply you, to these guys, you just never you never respond to me. Sometimes. Yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, I reply to you more than I was going to say. Yeah, no, I probably joking. Snapchat JB like once every couple months or something. Well, like, like that. if it shows that I even looked at it, you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Now, I probably would reply if he put a price on there how much he wanted to spend to get in the buck and bull business. Yeah. We could fix him up. Yeah, but that should be like your first thing. Like when you write to him, like put the offer. How, how much, much are you willing $20,000. Like that's, how, that's, the, that's the headline. Then he'll, he might open your DM. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. What's one thing you wish more people knew about you? That's interesting. Hmm. Pretty good at piano. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, real good at piano. Look at them fingers. I can't feel that half. Guy of, right there, though. I can't feel half of them. 
Is it permanently like that? It'll shut. It just won't open. Nice. Get you a good booger picker then. That's what a kid, a boy the other day was complaining about his riding hand and his wrist being sore. And he said, what do you think, JB? I said, what's wrong with it? It looked normal. It looked fine. He had a little knot right there. And I was like, look at all these knots. And he said, man, I I just can't close it. I said, well, you ought to have a riding hand like that. (laughs) And I held it out and he's like, oh, man. (laughs) That's every day. I mean, it's permanently like that. Where where do you draw the line as far as injuries? I mean, like lacerated kidney, that one's pretty easy. But, like, between, like, you know, pain, hurt, and, like, an actual injury, like. <sighs> whether I'm getting on or not? Yeah, whether you're getting on or not. If Where I can you walk. Draw? Yeah, if you can walk. Yeah. So and half the time I've probably, sh- I mean, there's been a lot of times I probably shouldn't have got on, but. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't no candy ass sport, I guess. That's it. No offense to tennis players, but it ain't tennis. Yeah. So. I was on a tennis team once. Yeah, you got kicked off. We won't yeah, say yeah. why. <laughs> a moon to passing car. <laughs> Apparently it was frowned upon. What was JB's mo- – yep, well, you can't do that during the tennis match while you're playing. Well, that makes okay. it more interesting. <laughs> Everybody laughed. <laughs> Except the coach. You're out of here. Well, I was losing really bad. I was trying to get the guy off his game. What was your most painful injury? Uh, painful. There's probably two of them. When I lacerated my liver, because I lacerated my liver, broke all my ribs on my right side, both stomped me in the guts. And then the the second one, I broke my tailbone. Ooh. That was the first day at the finals, PBR finals. First bull I got on that year. Hand hung my rope when I went to get off, and he hooked me right in the ass. And broke my tailbone. So, all week I had to get on. I got on the rest of the week with it broke. I got hung up. Bull fell on top of me, squished me. And then they would make me go and sit and sign autographs for two hours. So, I had to sit on a donut. <laughs> <laughs> like if you got hemorrhoids? <laughs> yeah. That's why that bull that rolled over the top of me, he squished me pretty bad. And I was kind of hobbling out of the arena. And Tandy was standing there by the gate. And he said, hey. Anything new? I said, nope, just my ass, and kept walking. <laughs> when <laughs> – sign autographs for two hours. When did you have – like, if if anybody's been following social media this year, like, you've seen, like, a lot, some of the pictures of JB's line for autographs have been, like, out and around the building. When did that start in your career? When I quit signing autographs when they wanted me to. <laughs> Which would have been – Probably 2015. 2015. Gotcha. Because that's that was the year I met you, yeah, and and I remembered that 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 you didn't, you know, and you said, well, I'll just you know use the fine as a write off. <laughs> yeah, and, I uh, did for ten years of my career. Every time I was supposed to be anywhere to sign, I did, and then. But it wasn't about, and that's what I told people. You know, these posters that we saw. It had it had a lot more to do with some other things right not on. like it's not like that you it had don't nothing mind. to do with the fans i exactly. don't care about signing exactly. it doesn't bother me yeah if a kid walks up to you i'll you're sign gonna, whatever he's got you're gonna sign it take a picture talk to his you know him and his parents whatever and talk go to his mom <laughs> yeah talk to his mom <laughs> good to see you again ma'am <laughs> but um but like it's yeah it had nothing to do with like yeah it had nothing to do with i didn't like signing autographs it had to do with more kind of business stuff yeah. that was going on and yeah I told them if they wanted to find me for not signing, that was fine. Yeah. Because my accountant told me it was a tax write-off. <laughs> uh, what was the biggest change that you made in yourself to make yourself successful? That's an interesting question. Was there well, anything that – When it came to riding bulls, it was always there. I just wanted to win yeah. at all costs. Like, I, anytime I got bucked off, you know, when I was younger, I showed a lot more emotion when I got bucked off. Like, I would tear shit up kick trash cans yeah. over, throw ropes, and I still do it to this day just where they can't see it anymore. Yeah, just wait until you're in the locker room. Uh, everybody would always get mad at me for doing that kind of thing, and I'd always explain it to people, you know. I'm like, well, take $30,000 of your money and go put it on black or red and lose it and see if you're not mad. Well, that's different. I said, no, it's not. This is how I make my living. When I don't stay on, it's something I did that caused it, and it would eat at me. Yeah. You know, if I if I got bucked off, like a bull just handed me, you know, yeah, I would get mad at myself. 
because, you know, it was something I did, but he was just better than me that day. But if I felt like I didn't try as hard as I should have, yeah. that ate at me. Yeah. I couldn't stand myself. It made me so mad I couldn't see straight. Like, I just, right. I couldn't, like, it pissed me off. Like right. If I felt like I quit the ship just a hair early and didn't try, oh, I was mad. That's when you'd see me really yeah. tear some shit up. Right. Because I was mad at myself. I wasn't mad I got bucked off. I was mad at myself for not trying harder. Were there, so you got on Bushwhacker 13 times. Mm-hmm. You, you you were probably a little more forgiving with yourself whenever the mother twelve, that you you know because you. Oh well, I was I was mad, but but that song got buck so hard and right. Most of the time when he threw me off, he wrecked me out, so it wasn't like I was just quitting the ship. Like yeah, he yeah. whacked me in the head a yeah, few that's times. Just stomped yeah. piss out of me. And yeah, one time the lights go out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he. <laughs> He slammed into the damn ground pretty damn hard that time. <laughs> what do you do in that? Could you see it good enough to know that you weren't running back into him? Tell, tell us Well, I didn't. Uh, I, it took me a second to get up. Yeah. The lights had come back on before I got up off did, the ground. Did you think for a split second that maybe you just got knocked out? Or you were dead? <laughs> well, I slid up there and nodded. When I nodded, when the latch popped, the breaker tripped, and it went completely dark. And the first thought running through my mind was, I can't ride him in a lit up ass arena. Now I'm tied to him in the dark. <laughs> and when he hit and turned back, I was a little behind. I could still feel him. I couldn't really see anything, but yeah. I could feel him. So I knew what he was doing. Well, I was a little behind, and I tried to cheat him to catch back up to him, and all that did was engage the slingshot. And when he hit and turned back, he drove my head in the ground hard. J.W. Hart goes, man, it's a good thing that ground was soft. I said, I went through it. I <laughs> promise. I hit the hard shit under it. So, dang. So, lights go out, and you're like, I mean, I st- my. Hell, you're I not, you're not looking when I can for see him. An, right, but you still weren't looking for an exit. You no, were trying, I was trying to ride him. You were him. trying to ride him. <laughs> what would they have done? The I rode him. <laughs> that's what, well, that's what somebody said. Why didn't you say you rode him? I said, because uh, when the lights came back on, then the whistle blew, and I was about half knocked out laying in the arena. Yeah. Trying to gather my chickens that were running around everywhere. Man, the dang lights go out for eight seconds, yeah. and it happens to be in the arena right when you nod your face on Bushwhacker one of the 13 times in your life that you got on him. What would they have done? Like, how would they have marked you? Like, That's so crazy. Dude, we got to put that in your movie. What's that? The lights going out? That story. Like it'd be like that happens uh like you and J B are hauling together and it happens to J B and you're Well the movie it doesn't it have to you. it doesn't have Dale and J B hauling together. Well, it I'm like saying, ends on that note. But but that would be a like it could be like some sort or of like flashback. when the credits rolling. Like, I don't know if I told you but I, remake it. You're in the you, we wrote you into the, a movie okay, script. Cool. Yeah. You could play yourself or you don't have to. So it like would you, be funny if Who would play you? Is it cussing aloud? Yeah. Me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what are you saying? Be cool if what? If he wasn't, if he was like the f- other frack. If he was somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> if he was just. If, <laughs> if somebody else played JB, but JB was in it. Cameo. Yeah, J- <laughs> JB is like our, our, uh, our cousin that lived with us that just ate Cheetos and played video games. I can't remember who it was. It may have been. I can't remember. Because that's his other favorite. It might. Style. It may have been Tanner when we came up here last yeah. time. He's like, Man, are they going to be videoing? I said, probably so. We're going to book bulls and stuff. I said, yeah, they'll probably video it. Is he, he mind like cussing? I said, dude, they video me. Like, <laughs> if they can get by with me around, you're golden. Yeah. We've, we've, had, we've had you in like, I don't know, at least – 25 youtube videos over yeah, the years I was, like, man, just, I was like man you gotta you're good if i'm good you're good <laughs> well i did so i wrote him as uh i, I tallied up the youtube revenue we did the oh, merch okay. but the, and then today i think it was like nine videos but it was only like a two and a half month period there's one video the uh uh rodeo time 164 yeah dude it's it's now turned into you got on a bull. Oh, there you got oh. on New Mexico bad boy and, uh, and you tortured Wes. Well, yeah. he started Dude, it. That's turned into my most watched YouTube video ever. Yeah, it's like three or four the, million views. The work glove and the I don't think it's, rope. it's over a million. I don't oh. think it's three million, but but uh, yeah, that one. So that I think it's fun to put together. I think you made like three hundred dollars on that video in the last two and a half months. 
Like yeah. that one was. That's crazy. We filmed that three years ago. Dang. That was that was right before. I went to uh, the finals. That was your fourteenth finals. Yeah. You know, you went to that. You were eighty-eight in the first round. I remember. Because he was, I think he was away from your hand. Yeah. And he I, really got to watch your your shoulder for the first time. Yeah, because it didn't work. Well, it worked the first one whenever. Well, yeah, when it went right. And then yeah, the next I was, night. I was needing bulls to go right, every one of them to go yeah. right, and only one of them went right. The rest of them went left. Then the next night, it was into your hand. And, and we I hung like, up. And, Dang it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that first bull I got on him, and, you know, my arm was pretty much stuck down here. Right. And I rode him, and I was thinking to myself when I got off, I was like, that's how you do that. All these years, and it's that <laughs> easy. <laughs> it just stops. I was like, <laughs> Man, that's way easier than what I've been doing all these years. Because I'd get to whipping it around and get it behind me and have to work ten times harder to get to where back where I was supposed to be. Yeah. And when it was locked down, you know, I just I could only do like this with it. Yeah. And when he turned back, it was like just I was like, man, that's it looks like clockwork. I was like, this is how you're supposed to do this. (laughs) I remember because I was like sitting low or I was standing, and you were in the shoots on the opposite side. So I was look watching across the arena. It was in T-Mobile. And I, I just remember watching that. Anyways. Well, I was, I was glad I rode that one at least one that week because yeah. they were all talking about how dumb it was to come back that early and get yeah. on and possibility of getting injured. And that's what they always say. Well, what if you, what if you injure it worse? I said, I ride bulls for a living. I mean, the possibility is always there. Right. And you're at the PBR World Finals. Yeah. Like, I this said, is. I'd made 13 finals in a row. I wasn't missing that one. So. Yeah. Yeah. You are at the Velocity that year, too, didn't you? I can't remember. No, that was. I don't think that year. Uh, it was the year before. That was 19. Yeah. Because I went, they, they called me, they invited me there, and I was like, yeah. I rode my two long round bulls and a short round. I got piled up hard. Messed it up again, tore the yeah. rotator. It ended up, I, I broke my shoulder blade and tore the, which we already knew. About halfway through that year, I tore the rotator cuff muscles. You were going to have surgery anyway. Yeah, I was supposed to have them right after the finals that year. Right. And uh, I was just trying to make it through the finals. And then when I that bull wadded me up at the velocity finals, yeah. well, then the first bull, I tried to get on him. My shoulder come out yeah. in the buck and shoot. Yep. And then the next day, they worked on it, and I was going to try to get on that night. And I bent over to pick a pair of socks up in the room, and the sun gun fell out. That's it. Yeah, right. I remember. Yeah, you, you're like. And I got it popped back in. It went back in, and that's when I called Tandy. I was like, you know, I'm not really worried about myself being hurt, but it's going to put them bullfighters in a bad bind because I'm going to be one-armed. Like, if I get hung up, I'm not going to be able to use it. Right. If I hit on it, yeah, I'm, not going gonna be able, I'm not going to be able to turn over because I can't use it to push myself over. I have to. You probably be, had something ranked. He was good, and he went left. I was like, gosh, <laughs> I couldn't pick it. I couldn't even pick my own nose with it. I was like, man, this is not going to go good. Yeah. <laughs> Golly. That's a tough call to make. Yeah, I was not real excited about that call. Favorite Western movie? Want some Dove. Duh. Want some Dove. Duh, stupid. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Tombstone's close second, though. Yeah. I like that one. Donnie doesn't. You don't like Tombstone? Not what is really. wrong? You're not American. What about it do you not like? I just don't know. I don't know. Like the I, Doc Holliday, like Val Kilmer, I just can't buy into it. Like what, man? That's like my favorite. That's the best character in there. That's I what I know. know. It's that's probably my favorite character Val Kilmer's ever played. We started that a game we didn't get to finish. Okay. Remember? I feel like he's the best actor in yeah. that movie. Personally, I agree. Fight's not with you, Holiday. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> we started the game we never got to finish. Play for Billhood, remember? I feel like I feel like there's much cornier acting by some characters in Lonesome Dove than Val Kilmer in Tombstone. Maybe like Roscoe Brown, but other than that. Like, or Jake. Yeah. I don't I feel, feel like, like Jake's that corny. Jake has a couple of spots in there. Like whenever they're about to hang him, I feel like he's just like, I didn't see no line, Gus. You know, I don't know. There's just yeah. a few times. I don't know. Where, like, your buddies are about to hang. You might say something. Just the way he And he was drunk. Yeah. He yeah. was pulling on that whiskey bottle. I feel like that's, that's like, that, that movie's pretty real life, you know? like That's true. I'm, maybe it's not Jake I'm thinking. 
but like there's just a few spots. I Jasper's just feel like got a few lines. Of, Every time I jingle my chain, she looks at me like she wants to carve my liver. Blue duck, like when he's like, I like it wit. Like, I don't know. But we might be other, picking it apart because yeah. we've watched it sixty three times. Yeah. But oh, no, in the last week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, don't worry. At uh, four thirty this morning, I got to watch uh, eight seconds. Yeah, but how I was many? about to ask, what's his favorite movie? Eight seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bull riding. Bull ri- anything with bull riding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This yeah, is he, one wa- the- he wakes me up at four thirty. He goes and uses the bathroom. And he comes back and he crawls up in the bed with me. I was like, "What are you gonna do? <clears throat> watch bull riding. You wanna watch <laughs> Lane Frost? Yeah." So I turned eight seconds on. Samantha started cracking up, and I said, "Hey, little buddy, it was starting to come on." He said, "Yeah." I said, "There's nobody I would rather watch eight seconds with than you, bud." <laughs> at four thirty in the morning. Does he have it on his phone or anything? Or do you? He didn't, I'm not giving him a phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he caught some people a piss the other day. <laughs> Did you call somebody they, on your phone? And No. Oh. But he was on the bus. I was like, I was not giving him a phone. He'll talk to people, but. There, somebody in here asks if he's going to be a bull rider. That's one of the questions. I doubt I it. Know, I mean, that's just, <laughs> I doubt it. That's up to him, but right now it's eat, sleep, bulls. Like, he knows which bulls are mine, and then his bull, Tudorowski. Yeah. Oh, he loves that bull. That's when he called them kids because we were bucking bulls, and he was the first one I loaded. Brandon had bucked some bulls, and I yeah. loaded him, and nobody nobody put a rope on him. Because he's a – Was it at na- Brandon's? Yeah. The name does not fit the bull. Really? You think Tudorowski, you think, oh, I just... Big uh, Muley. Yeah, and then yeah. they run him in there, and he's got horns two and a half foot long on each side of his head, and he's meaner than hell. <laughs> and uh, Jagger was on the back of the bucket shoots with Samantha, and he was calling them all <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> So nobody, nobody got on Because nobody would get on Tudorowski, and then finally this one boy goes, I'll get on him. And I come walking back over there, and Jagger was pumped. He's like, David's getting on my bull to the Dad. I was like, well, good. And I think the only reason David did was because there was a two-and-a-half-year-old kid standing on the bucket shoes calling everybody <laughs> God, for not funny. getting on his bull. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, uh, get my rope up the truck. I'll get on it. He would, too. Like, I, I've asked him, you know, just messing around with him when I load some of them bad bulls, just working them that are fighting to shoot and kicking and jumping. Yeah. You want to get on this one? And, I mean, he'll head straight to that shoot like, like there is nobody. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> With a glove that, you know, like a, a man sized glove, it's folded over so the fingers are man no dude, shirt on. That no kid shirt. has like ninety eight gloves. <laughs> All types. Like <laughs> and he's got an actual riding glove I got that fits his hand. Yeah. From Barstow. And He'll wear it occasionally and then he'll have a work glove on and then he'll have a sock for a glove. I mean it just yeah, you he'll ride call. anything too. I seen him get on the arm of a of a bench outside yeah. of JB's office, and, and he like he he sought it out. Yeah. He saw it like across, like from here to the door, and like got his stuff and was put his helmet on. He's like he's headed over to that bench to ride it. <laughs> like oh, nobody really? had to put him on it. Yeah. You know, he's just like, what he's, can I ride around here? Yeah. He's, oh, going over there. He's pretty independent. Like you just better stay up with him because yeah. he's gonna do what he wants to do. Man, Samantha is always like running around behind. Samantha, that kid. she, we bought him a, you know, like a big playground deal. Yeah, and Samantha went all out on it. I mean, there's, go big or go home with that one. Yeah, I mean, she had they leveled the ground, they brought rock dust in, they put the turf grass down, they got the landscape timbers around the edge, and it's not a little deal. Like it's thirty by thirty, like it's big. <laughs> wow, and it's like a, I'll show you a picture. <laughs> 30 by 30. That's like At least. This, that's that's the size of this room. Yeah. Maybe a little bigger. Yeah, that's how big the spot like is. The black the floor. Is. JB's going to be going, leaving a rodeo, going to the next one. The and guy's Jagger, rigging bag sitting next to him is going to call him. There you go. Hey, man, we checked Jagger's rigging bag. I'm missing oh, a glove. Oh, dear heavens. Oh, wow. He's butt naked. Just wait. I mean, it's, it's humongous. Does he love it? Oh. He, he, Three stories? Almost could be. Yeah, it is with that. With the Dude, little, that's three his, stories. His lookout. Yeah, the lookout's three stories. It's got the closed in tube on one side, the open slide on that. But I mean, it's huge. Big turf area. She went all out 
and it's funny as hell. He'll have clothes on, and as soon as he goes out there to play, as soon as he gets to it, he strips his boots and his clothes off, and naked he goes. He d- that don't hurt him going down that slide? That's kind of what I thought. But. <laughs> that hurts mm. me thinking about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah he'll he'll want to ride that drop barrel naked. I'm like, dude, you need to put some pants on. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting one of those. Yeah. And put They're it good here. practice. No, I'd put it at uh, the flea market. There's the actual picture of the whole setup. Dude, that's Dang. like that's pretty cool. I kind of like the turf. That was that's a good call. Yeah. It that's right in like, house. Yeah. I kind of like it also because I don't have to mow it or weed eat right. it. Right. Yeah. I can just weed eat it. Well, Colt has to weed eat around the edges of it. <laughs> Colt, man, just tried and true. He's your go-to, huh? Yeah, when he's there. <laughs> Seems, seems, like, a bunch of board seems, seems like, well, he went to California last weekend. His brother was graduating the military. Yeah. So he went to California. And then, I mean, I, I said, man, you can just find anything to do to get out of work, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and Tanner was gone, and Tanner's got a lot of horses there. You know, he's been yeah. staying there plugging his trailer in, which is, you know, I don't care. Samantha's nephew. and uh, But he, like, showed up with a herd of horses. So <laughs> it's not that bad when Colt's there because Colt will feed for him. Yeah. Well, they were both gone. Yeah. So I had to feed horses and bulls. I was getting up at like five thirty, six o'clock in the morning to go start feeding. <laughs> so that way I was done by eight. Was eight. able to be at Peacock's. Yeah. I haven't been to Peacock's in quite a few months. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, I've yeah, been feeding Brandon, a lot. Brandon said on Snapchat him and his wife were there, and I was wondering if you'd been any. I hadn't been in a while. They asked me a couple times. I went, Colton Frisland asked me, hey, Peacock's tomorrow? I was like, dude. If I go, it's going to be really, really early, and you're not going to be awake. <laughs> Fritz doesn't work, wake up super early? He's not uh, a uh, morning no. person? Like, you're lucky to get Fritz there by 1030. Yeah. Lucky. It's on a good day. He's more of a, a you know, eat breakfast at lunch kind of guy. Oh, man. I got to hand, that, that, that was the first time I'd ever met him at the Tarleton practice pen the other day. He seems like a pretty neat dude. And usually Jagger sleeps. I'm usually the first one up around there. Like, I usually – I'm up by 6 or 6.30, no later than – Yeah. And start my coffee, and then I take off to the barns and start my day. And for some reason, his time's been messed up because we went to that bull riding Saturday, and he didn't take a nap all day. And then we leave, and so he fell asleep as soon as we leave that bull riding, and it's like 6 o'clock. Well, then he wakes me up Sunday morning at – Four thirty or five o'clock in the morning to go use the bathroom and then to watch bull riding, and then yesterday he didn't have a nap all day. Wouldn't take a nap, so he went to bed kind of early last night. And then four thirty this morning, we're, <laughs> we're outside TTing in the rocks and then watching eight <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Sounds like a good life. Four oh, yeah. thirty this morning, golly. Yeah, and I mean wide awake, talking about bulls. Like, Did, he starts coming on, and he's like, them bulls buck hard, daddy. The bulls you get on, and Lane Fryles ride those bulls, and tough heat them in. Like, I mean, and Colt told me the other day when we were at that bull riding, when I started bringing bulls to load them on the trailer, like, he was just standing there, and when they started coming down the lane, like, he looked, and he said, oh, daddy's bulls. Like, he knows which ones are mine yeah, and yeah. which ones aren't. Like, yeah. he pays attention to them bulls now. Did you it, have that much energy when you were his age, you think? I have no idea. Yeah. I'm not sure he's not but drinking just like, Monster. <laughs> <laughs> like, as a kid, did you have, like, a lot of energy going? Yeah, but yeah. Samantha's the same way. Oh, really? And I'm the same way. Once I wake up, I'm up. And well, I'm I knew that. All day. I knew that now. Yeah. I just didn't know if maybe, because I'm trying, I mean, I figure he's probably going to be like this his whole life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, as, you know, Samantha's the same way. Like, I've watched her, you know, drive for, Yeah. you know, before Jagger was born. Man, I I rode with her. We left Cheyenne, Wyoming. We didn't stop. She didn't stop driving until we were in Stephenville. She's not. She's not like a girly girl. No, she's like she's like oh now strong. When it comes to clothes and shit and makeup like that, yeah. Well, she's, she's fancy. Yeah, I mean, like she's like she's. I don't want to say fancy. She's a lady. Yeah, she's a lady, but she's not like oh she get out there and ride horses girly. and that's what she she <laughs> she gets mad at me because. They said, oh, it won't be long before he can outrun you. I said, hell, he can outrun me now. <laughs> like, I mean, if he takes off, it, I can't run 
you know, I don't run very fast. I mean, look at the way I run away from a bull chasing me. It's not very good. <laughs> no, and serpentine. Uh, so I tell Samantha serpentine. all the time when he takes off, I'm like, you're up. She's like, why do I always have to chase him? I said, you're the one talks about wanting to work out and do things like that. Well, there you go. Yeah. I have never, ever in my life said I wanted to work out. Ever. <laughs> Yeah, you sat down so the podcast room. We're in the corner of the weight room, and there's all this equipment in here. And he's like, "What's all this? <laughs> what is this stuff? What is this torture thought, gen- dungeon?" I just thought it was props. No, Samantha reminds me a lot of my sister. Yeah, and Carly, Malonson, Malonson, dude. I bet Carly and Samantha would be two peas in a pod. I bet they probably know each other too, but. Disagreed, though. That would be a good fight. No, they wouldn't. I mean, I'm like, they're kidding. both ladies, but yeah, they're just that. so they're so strong. Anyway, uh, yeah. So we got a new kid here. He's uh, uh, Everett, and um, Everett Eggleston. He's in a he's in a rodeo school in December in Derby, Kansas, during the NFR. So I got him. I got him training. We got. I told him he got to lose about ten, twelve pounds. But I suggested it. I didn't. I didn't say he had to. Was he gonna get on bulls? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so we'll have Wait. three bull riders here. Oh man, I'll bring a trailer load. One oh, of yeah. them's recovering from a from a, a collarbone surgery. Willie's. Man, there's a couple of them ones you've had. You you should start them on a, a milk supplement when they get here. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, their bones are weak. I mean, mine got brittle after I turned thirty or thirty two, but I put them through a lot and. Man, that one guy, Nick. Nick <laughs> seemed like every something else was broke. I was like, get that guy a gallon of milk. We might need to just start tilling the arena more, dude. No hell, no. I would put more rocks in it. Is That's, what I would do. I I do need to like. I gotta get a tractor. I gotta get. No, you ain't gotta till it. That's why we did a bull riding school. I helped Shane do a bull riding school on the reservation in Washington State. Yeah, <laughs> and dude, there was rocks <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. And Not a rock, that's a boulder. Somebody goes, one of them kids getting on is like, what about those rocks? I said, more incentive to stay on. Yeah. Because if you hit the ground, it's going to hurt like hell. Yeah. Well, they got the incentive. The main thing that, the the main reason why I'd really like to till it is not so much for the bull riding, but more so for Donnie and the bronc riding. Yeah, Donnie, I've been watching Donnie's videos. Like, when he comes off, he flies far. He saved the two best buck offs he's ever had for Netflix. That's a good job. Yeah. You're Dude. welcome, people. I, every time I see him fly through the air, I'm like, I want to see. Oh, we're flying through the air. This is not good. <laughs> oh, flying through the air is not good. Yeah. Uh, I got a question. Uh, what do you look for when you're purchasing bucking bulls? Just depends. How good they buck, how hard they kick. I mean, if they're young enough, you know, as long as they kick, you can, you can halfway teach one to turn back. And yeah. for me – I like a mean. Yeah. If I got a little fat to him, perfect. Yeah. So, so so you're not very happy that Jordan's been gentling your bulls down? I don't give a shit about them, too. Yeah. So can, that's about 801, like, can like I, I don't think you could make him mean. Yeah. Really? Like, he's always. Isn't from the time the I got. The darker one or the lighter one? The lighter one. Mm-hmm. The darker one used to be kind of, like, he'll act like he's mean, but he never tried to hook anybody. Like, he'd just walk up to you, bowed up. But he never tried to hook anything. But the other one, you'd have to push him out of the way to feed him. Like yeah. he's just always been like that. Is Where, the, the dark one, Don Don? They've been calling him Little Don. Yeah, because the same color as Donnie's hair. Yeah. Little Don. We should get. We should get Don on Little Don. <laughs> Dude, yeah, right. crack, you could crack, crack out. out your your old bull rope. Let's put yeah. your bronc saddle on him. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's wait maybe for uh, some bullfighters because. Uh, your bull riding career was a lot of hang ups. Yep. <laughs> that one spins fast too. Yeah. To the right. I hung up to everything I tied my hand to. Yeah. Well, you had that down pat. Yeah. You had the first step. You gotta learn how to tie your hand in there where it won't come out. Donnie Will- did that good. But Willie did, got he started some good rides though. Well, oh, right. I, I it might have started them, but I <laughs> hung up to like I was not. Well, that's the trick of riding bulls. <laughs> yeah. First you figure out how to tie your hand in there where it doesn't come out. And after you get that down pat, which Donnie had, then you have to figure out how to make your ass stay near near your hand? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah. yeah, it's real simple. It's real. Started them good and kept it entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Willie it's got real simple. Hung up. Uh, what was that? Thursday, maybe? Yeah. No, f- Friday morning. Friday yeah. morning. Uh, and 
it was. We're going to we work on a wheelie today. Yeah, we're going to buck a few today. But I had. We'll work we were, with him on that barrel, though. <laughs> we were doing a filming for rock and roll, but I had the. the I figured phone out going. why he's sliding back and forth. Whoop. Uh, how so? I just slowed that video down. Watch it. Well, he's got a little hump in his back, mm-hmm. uh, but that's what it's from is he's putting his free arm too far in front of his face. Yeah. He's twisting his shoulders forward. <laughs> like if he goes, if you go to the front and you're square, right. and everything stays square. But you notice how he puts his hand right yeah, out Yeah, he's here. been and bringing his elbow up a little too. Well, see, that gets your shoulders twisted. So when you go to the front, it's making him kind of yeah. hump up. Yeah. Well, when he humps up, it's taking the weight off his legs. That's why. I mean, he's riding them. Pretty much correct on that, you know, one. But you can tell the farther the ride goes on, he's sliding back and forth from his rope. And that comes from not having no weight on your legs. Yeah. Yeah, he – Uh, it's funny you, 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 you say that because he went Saturday. He's got a few videos. Then he got on four bull – four? Mm-hmm. Three or four Saturday. Some – they're a little – they're a little better practice bulls than frostbite. Just kind of a little more kick to them. Yeah. And – uh. And so yesterday we were talking about it, and he actually asked. He was like, "Man, you think I you think I need to not be doing this?" And I said, "Man, I don't think you need to be doing it like that. I think you need to get your elbow down more, and so square. square up your shoulders." I said, "But JB will be here tomorrow. You need to talk to him about it." That's what I was watching. I think that's why he's getting a <laughs> kind of getting that hump in your back. Yeah, is because when he's going to the front, his arms are already way out in front of him, so it's just pulling his shoulders. And right, can do that. You know, if you keep your arm beside you, then you're square. And when you go forward, everything goes forward. And if you typically, like, at least on Frostbite and some of those videos, like, you can tell he'll, like, wake up, like, three jumps in. Yeah. And he'll he'll start really trying to do everything correct. Yeah. So I think he's getting where he can – he's just got to, like, get that. Yeah. <laughs> go over a dismount procedure again. But yeah. we've been we've been doing – so he's not been on Frostbite with Spurs in months. And so, like, he'll get on frostbite with just a bull rope and slick heels, and then the second trip he'll get on in a flank rope yeah. and slick heels. And uh, and then if, if he gets to where he's just, like, falling off, like, anyway, we'll just – sometimes we go back to the bull rope, but he ain't he ain't had spurs on a bull. In a, well, he did get on prison Mike. Mm-hmm. Prison Mike did. I mean, it's, he's, you know, he's got them narrow shoulders, but he did come out to the left hard – and then go back, turn back to the right. Oh, and it, Mike. it did. Like, he's just a smart dude. Prison Mike is. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just. And I, during this podcast, do do we get, like, a restroom break or anything? Yeah, you can go yeah. bathroom. Yeah. I was just wondering maybe because I didn't know if you had, like, a bucket under the table or something. I got this cup. No. I better go to the bathroom. Yeah, go to the bathroom. Yeah. I'm going to pick, pick, like, one or two more questions. Pick good ones. Okay. Where is the bathroom? Well, it's right there. Oh, so no, we arranged this whole area. And- we did, yes. Hey, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the uh, podcast with the greatest bull rider of all time, Dale Brisby, and also joining us in this one is, is J.B. Mooney. Um, a lot of great stories and a lot more to come to the second half. Just real quick, wanted to encourage you, if you are enjoying this of, of J.B., we happen to carry his merch line on dalebrisby.com. You can see this shirt behind me as well, uh, two shirts behind me. Um, we've got... JB merch, uh, caps. We've got three or four caps in, in 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 stock right now. Two different shirts, a hoodie, and coming soon we will have these these uh, limited edition posters signed by JB Mooney himself. Uh, he talks about the 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 bull that he's getting on here, and a quote that he had in our last podcast with him. Nobody remembers eighty five point bull rides. So if you're a fan of JB the two-time world champion, then you're going to understand that quote and you're going to appreciate this poster. There's 500 of them signed. And if you want to be notified of when they drop, you have to text the words JB poster, just JB space poster to uh, my phone number, 940-353-0890. So text JB poster to... 940-353-0890, Nine four zero three five three zero eight nine zero, and we will let you know when stuff and and that's the only way that you can find out when these posters drop. So signed posters coming soon to dalebrisby dot com, but you got to get notified of them via text message. So text me those words, JB poster, and then uh, and then you'll be let know. So yeah, we've also got other merch 
on dalebrisby.com. But uh, real quick, before we get back to the second half of, of the, the, the podcast, I just want to um, give a quick shout out to the, the sponsors that keep us going at Radiator Ranch, Total Feeds, powering the JBDB bucker, Buckers, as well as Boone for 21 years. Um, then we've got, <coughs> oh, excuse me, Can-Am, side-by-side, Feed Buggy, FeedBuggyCorporate.com. You can go to, they, they actually secured that website for me, for Can-Am. And then um, Rock and Roll Denim. Rock and Roll! Reflex Denim is the only way that Dale Brisby will um, get on a bull. Like, I got to have my Reflex, spur them for 90. American Hats, um, that's right. Whenever They got that dip in the right side. Because when I go 90, I take my hat off and I throw it. And so they all got a really strong dip on the right. And all of our interns are living in Excalibur containers right here in Graham, Texas. So now back to the podcast. And I don't, I don't ever want to fight, you know. Like I, I'd, I'd rather not, you know. Just like yeah, I'm not gonna too. just go fight someone, you know. Like if because I don't like them, like. And uh, it's got to be a situation like that. Like they're about to jump these people or my friends, and I'm gonna have to help my friends, you know. Like I, I will jump in. I'll get my ass kicked. There's. You never helped Wes. If I, well, I wasn't there, <laughs> he picked the to fight. To be fair, <laughs> to be well, fair, I, mean, I wasn't there. Oh, I thought you were talking about the hot shots. Yeah, yeah, no, you, that was more fun. Well, then I and had he to, picked the fight. No offense that's to Wes, fi- that's how you fix his back when he was sore. You just shock stretch him, him out, shock therapy, rope him and stretch. Well, him out. no, no offense to Wes, but I had to, you know you were my better friend, so I had yeah, to you know sure. it's like <laughs> got to pick a two sides sometimes. <laughs> if I watch you get in a fight, depending on the situation, if you're like betting someone you can beat them up and it's just like this obvious one-on-one if there's something about it makes it an obvious one-on-one but if you don't want to fight and i watch you get in a fight that's how you know i'm probably (laughs) that's how you can so what happened with the three big ones well they were we were about to fight so i go around the corner well what's the last fight you got in uh it's been a while long time i try not to fight same yeah I mean, I, I will. I right. have to, but right. And see, like oh, I was practicing hitting that dummy, but y'all don't have my weaponry. <laughs> I don't see a bear bottle or brass knuckles anywhere. <laughs> Bad shoulders and being 140 pounds, use weapons. How many fights you think you've been in total? I don't know. <laughs> a few. Yeah. They weren't. That, I mean, they weren't real bad fights. Yeah. There was a couple of them that were. Were there any of them that you did not want to fight? Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I blew my knee out, I had a big brace on it. wasn't even supposed to be walking. And we was at a big party, and fight breaks out. And boy swings at a buddy of mine. I hit him across the face with a beer bottle, busted it, cut his face, and he shook his head and looked at me. I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> How many you been in, Leroy? A few. Eight? Teen. Yeah. Something like that. Donnie? That organized or? Not many. No, kidding. Not many? Uh-uh. Me neither. I don't know. I married Samantha and nobody wants to fight me now. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, she's so mean. Mine weren't ever like, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I just have that face. Like People just want to punch it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't get that. Man, I used face. a beer bottle a lot in fights, and everybody knew I'd swing a beer bottle. And then, you know, it sucks. I got hit with a beer bottle in the back of the head. Ooh. I was like, no wonder nobody likes <laughs> beer bottles. Ooh. That shit hurts. I got hit over the shoulder with one, knocked my shoulder out. Um, you ever hit somebody and it didn't break? Mm-hmm. I bet that really hurt. I bet it hurts worse. And then I kept swinging it. Yeah. Mm. What um what are you ranked in the world? Sixth. Sixth. You were in like third for a while this year, huh? Yeah, after Cheyenne, I got knocked out there, broke my cheek, my jaw, busted <laughs> yeah. a tooth out. I come home a couple weeks and they passed me and dropped me down to like tenth or something and I went back. I'm trying to ask I'm trying to 
filter through some of these that you can't find on Google. Like how many times has JB won the world? You know, that'd be twice. That'd be twice. <clears throat> how old were you when you? What do you remember your first bull ride? That was yeah, a good one. Yeah, you, were, you said you were thirteen. Thirteen years old. And you I had that. Uh, I had that technique of tying my hand in there down correctly. Just, Got hung up to a bunch of them. Well, that first one, yeah. The whooped proper me, technique. Whooped me down, hit me. I hung to him and stomped the piss out of me. And I was kind of thinking, man, do I really want to do this? Like, <laughs> that sucked. Next day, I was like, hey, let's do it again. <laughs> do you remember your first one? Yeah. Uh, my first bull bull, same thing happened. I was at Charlie Thompson's. I remember. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> Got on a big mean bastard, like, and I was little, and this bull was not small. Yeah, you were like ninety five pounds. You ever been out to Charlie's place, Charlie mm-hmm. Thompson's place in Lubbock? I know who anyway. you're talking about. Yeah, he was my old man. Used to work for him and all that. But <clears throat> this sucker, of course, it was after I went ninety. But this sucker did bring my face down, and we connected heads. And his was a lot harder. <laughs> and I just remember waking up in the car on the way home. Yeah, we were an hour down the road. He was talking the whole time, and he goes, I don't feel good, and yeah. threw up all over the back seat. <laughs> that's what – that bull stepped on my face at Kennewick. That's what – I was out for like five minutes cold. Dude, you like, FaceTimed me, and your face looked not good. Well, that's what uh, – that's the longest I've ever been knocked out. Like, you know, I mean, I'd have laid there. Yeah. Like, Samantha, that's – she was – a couple minutes I'd been laying out there knocked out, and – the pickup man's wife was like, hey, do you want to walk out there? I'll watch Jagger. And she's like, yeah, I guess. And she said, I wish I wouldn't have walked out there. Because really? Because all that, you know, I was on my back. All that blood was running down my face, back to my, like, my neck. It was everywhere. Yeah. Just running all over the place. Well, when she walked out there, she said my eyes were rolled back in my head, and I wasn't breathing right. Like, yeah. I was gurgling. <laughs> and she said, I thought you were dead. And she had texted me about sending <laughs> something to somebody's friend or somebody's whatever, and – I said, how's JB? And it was that same weekend. She said, I thought he died. Yeah. I That's the first died. time she had ever told me that. Like, you know, I thought you were dead. God. And shoot, I got up. I guess they, they pulled the meat wagon out there and everything finally and got the stretcher out. And they said they snapped the wheels, you know, locked the legs in. And my eyes rolled back around my head. And <laughs> they today. said I, I stood up, walked right out of the arena. And Samantha was like, man, you were talking to him just normal and everything. I don't remember it. I remember him jerking me down. I remember hitting the ground. And when he stepped on me, it knocked me out. Yeah. But I remember the last thing I remember, I hit the ground. The next thing I remember, the doctor in the sports medicine trailer, like, I, he goes, did that hurt? And for some reason, I snapped out of it then. And I was like, what is he talking about? And I look around. I realize I'm in the sports medicine trailer. And I look down, and he's holding a needle in front of my face. And I was like, man, just do whatever you got to do. Yeah. He went back to stitching, and I was like, I sold my face up. <laughs> <laughs> what well, does it healed well? Yeah. Can't yeah, and then you can't even see it at all. What does a day of eating look like for JB? What are you going to eat today? Cheese quesadilla. <laughs> Those are delicious. <laughs> They're the Spanish grilled cheese, man. Did you, order, you ordered some cheese quesadillas? <laughs> oh, right. Did you get ketchup with it? <laughs> Why you dip it in ketchup? <laughs> like a three year old. Well,. Uh, I haven't been eating breakfast lately, so usually one meal a day gets me by. So you skip the most important meal. <laughs> well, I'm usually I don't, working. I don't like eating breakfast. Yeah. I like eating breakfast. I love but breakfast food. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I uh, I have a protein shake for breakfast. I don't I don't eat breakfast. If I eat breakfast, I usually don't eat lunch. I may or may not eat dinner. Yeah. Here lately, I've just been eating lunch, and that's about it. We got another one. Um, is being 21 too old to learn how to ride. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> no. Everybody thinks there's, you, their clock is ticked. Do you want them to say no? Like, you, well, I was going to be a bull rider, but I was too old. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you're asking that, you might do Yes. If you're asking if it's too old, it's too old. Just go do it. Yeah, yeah. Just go try it out. I may figure out real quick it's not for you. And then we then <laughs> we have school. some questions. How much money do you make? <laughs> Depends on if I stay on. Yeah. Oh. If I do not stay on, not shit. Specific moment in time where he knew that he'd made it. Like this is it. I made it. 
I bet winning the world. I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> still waiting on it. Yeah. Still waiting on it. I yeah, bet when I retire, I'll be like, oh, whew, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other question. What you going to do when you retire? Own buck and bulls. <laughs> yeah. You love hauling buck and bulls. Oh, yeah. Man. I like messing with bulls, any kind of bulls. We put on rodeos when I was in high school, my old man, and I love and still do love doing anything with rough stock. But golly, I hate dealing with timed event stuff. That's what I know. There's nothing like under more underwhelming than like having to like – I'm not saying that the actual ropers themselves shouldn't be doing – but just like working a de-rigging shoot for a team roping, working a shoot, like pushing calves up, like oh, having yeah. a sort, like that stuff just, there's nothing exciting to me about That's that. That's why everything I have at home is mean. Yeah. <laughs> but like. Keep you on your toes 24-7. Loading bulls or. or. Oh, you should have seen me yesterday loading a bull. Which one? Big spotted bull. Uh, he's a little wild. Yeah. He's been by himself. What's his name? He has no name. His brand's 127. 127. And, uh, no more name. There it is. He, no uh, more name. I was by myself and run him up on the trailer and shut the cut gate behind the trailer. And, you know, that trailer out there has the butterfly gates on the yeah. back. Oh, I pushed the cut gate up there, grabbed the driver's side one, went to shut it. He just turned around and come back off that trailer. Well, He's not real mean. He's just wild. Yeah. You know, like, he wasn't wanting to hook me, but when he come off the trailer, he hit the butterfly gate with his hip, Ooh. hit the cut gate, and had me stuck between the cut gate and the pipe fence. Like, I was wedged. Like I couldn't go anywhere. But you were safe away. No, I was stuck between it, and he was pushing it. Oh, was like, squishing it was, the piss it was out of squishing me. you. Yeah, it was oh, squishing the shit out of me. I was me. picturing this little triangle where it's all. No, like, the lane's here. My trailer's sitting there. Well, I had the cut gate. I brought it around, pushed it, and I grabbed this door. Yeah. Well, when he come back off that trailer, he hit the door. The door hit the cut gate, and I was standing right at the corner of the cut gate, so it wedged me into the pipe right here, and yeah. the gate had me mashed. That's I scary. I could, oh. And you're by yourself. Yeah. The only, the only way I could get out of it is for him to go back onto the trailer and not be pushing on that gate, and thank God he did. Wow. Like he tried to hook another gate because there's another lane goes down the other side. He tried to drop his head down and push it through that gate, and he hit it a few times. And his ass was up against the gate that had me squished, and finally he turned around jumped back on the trailer, and I got the gate Dang. shut. <laughs> so, I, was, I was in a tight spot. So If he had pushed on it any harder, he would have hurt me. So we could we could uh, label this podcast the time when JB almost died. Everybody's going to think we're talking about <laughs> yeah. Fort Madison, Iowa, but really we're talking about him loading bulls at the house. I've been hurt quite a few times by getting mashed behind gates and stuff. Yeah. I fractured my hip. Dude, it's dangerous, man. Like, uh, Donnie, in the first episode of the deal, and, and like, you know, some people don't really realize that. You know, the next yeah. day, a couple of days after that came out, you know, I was like, I was at a pretty big ranch and talking to some guys and, they were like, you know, because it's it's a funny show, mm -hmm. you know. And so, but then in that moment, you're like, Donnie said even himself, he was like, man, you hear guys, horror stories of guys dying. And to a common viewer who doesn't know, like, it's like, oh, okay. But, like, dude. Catch one of those happens. to the dome. <laughs> the dome just, just much, that yeah. story right there. Yeah. Like, oh, dude. If, he, if, he'd have put, if he'd have pushed on the gate I was behind instead of trying to go under that other gate, it'd have hurt me bad. I was hurt stuck. You bad. I couldn't. Like, if he'd have pushed me, it'd have, it'd have broke something or tore yeah. shit because I was, I was – the corner of the gate had me pushed right here, and I was up against a pipe fence. Oof. Like, I mean, I couldn't go anywhere. That's the worst. I, I was stuck. Especially I was butterfly gates, too. They got all that extra on the end. Yeah. Me, I was sitting I was, there talking to Mark Voss. He ran the Swinsons and True Burson, and we were – and, like, it was like – and then Bonner was there, and uh, uh, it was like three or four stories. Yeah. Uh, right after we we started talking about that, it's like two, three stories of like people dying. I had a calf, like a young, some one, of just them a, recently, uh -huh. like a two year old, kick a gate and spin around, yeah. and he tried to come around the end of the gate. And I realized what was about to happen. I tried to turn and step up, and when I turned, he caught me sideways. Yeah, like fence on this side of me, and gate on this side, and he was pushing. On that gate, trying to get back to the pen he come out of, 
and it was like I was in a human vice. Like, it smashed me so hard. I was seeing stars. Yeah. And he finally backed off, and the pressure, the gate swung by him. Then he come and hooked shit out of me. <laughs> and I crawl up, and somebody's like, you okay? I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, heck, I finally, I kept riding, and I finally went, they were like, man, you need to go get checked out, x-rays and MRIs and stuff. And I'd fractured my hip in two oh, places. Dang. And my pelvis bones that are supposed to go like this were like that where he twisted me around so bad. Oh, Mashed snaps. me so bad. I didn't think the story was going there. Oh, yeah. Dang. Like they x-rayed me and they're like, oh, yeah, you fractured your hip. It was like two or three places. I was like, what? And they're like, oh, yeah. I Dude, like, I, I remember, yeah. like, it's like one of the first lessons. Like, I remember my old man yelling at me. Like, you either grab the gate yeah. or get back. Like, he said, grab it and put your hands on it. Like, grab a hold of it. Because, well, like like you know, like a cow. Yeah, it's like getting kicked by a calf or anything if yeah. you're up close it don't hurt near as right. bad but if you're far away then they get out or if you're just barely if you just have your hands up or something or you don't have your hands up, like leon <laughs> coffee has a story of a guy i want to say it was rodeo somewhere at a reservation or close to like arizona or something and a uh, big guy and uh he was running the out gate and he was just kind of he was just hanging out he was running the out gate but he was just lightly holding you know had his arms on it and this bull whipped around and hit that out gate, hit him in his forehead, and killed him. Uh-huh. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more stories. But. Shane was helping me, Proctor. And it was actually one of his calves. I'd been working them. And we was just running through the shoes, messing with them. And he had the gate rope run through the latch. And he was out there. And I sat on this calf and everything. And you could tell he had he was locked in on Shane standing out there. And he was mean. Yeah. It wasn't very big, but I, I – I told Shane, I said, you might want to watch him. He's pretty quick. When he leaves here, well, Shane popped that in latch and pulled the gate, and that calf followed that gate around was trying to get to him. Yeah. And all you could see when he mashed him was his head stuck above the gates. Yeah. He tried to step up, but Ooh. it smashed him, and all his head was stuck up above it. The buck and Thank shit. the Lord. Well, it, he backs off, and the gate swings around. He steps down, and he's kind of bent over, and I was like, you Okay. Yeah, I think so. I said, well, you might want to climb up. And he said, why? I said, because he's coming back. Yeah. He had just went a little ways and spun around and was coming back to hook him again. Yeah. God. Man, and then you go to thinking about, like, all the fighting bulls. Oh, yeah. Like, I we're worked. just talking about bucking bulls. Yeah. And they'll get to where they respect you. And and fighting bulls will, too. But, man, them yeah, some them, guns. Them fighting bulls don't respect shit, Harley. Like, Sometimes kind of you can, like... You know, everybody everybody gives everybody, you know, shit for working bulls up on a gate and shit. Yeah. Like, them bucking bulls, I don't climb... I try not to. Right. You know, like, I work them on the ground, but them fighting bulls, mm. like, hell with that shit. You can't. <laughs> like, no. The best... Unless you want to die. Those bull ones fight you brought move. that day here, there's no way. There's no freaking way you could have. And I mean the best... The best accident that happened that day and nobody got it on video. Which one? You oh, falling off the side of the trailer. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm that song I, it was a good thing you got your arms out because well, it would have broke your arm in half as hard as he kicked that and, cut gate. He was gonna swing it and that bull kicked that thing. And I was the only one that saw him. Golly. Because I was standing behind the trailer and could see him and he was on the backside of it when he swung it. I mean, that gate come around Humming. hard. Yeah. And he jerks his arms out when he did. He reaches to grab the trailer and he misses it. And it looked like a tree falling. <laughs> it's like something out yeah. of a cartoon. Yeah. Well, it's also like slow motion just me and I getting, was like me getting my face smashed the next day would have been good to have on. Oh yeah, when we fed him, dude. Yeah, it's, like, fed. it's like it's <clears> like I was right here, and then I just woke up on the other side of the alley. Like it didn't well, knock what, me out, but I just like it happened so fast. I told him I was like, "Hey, watch that five hundred now." Okay. And so but I, I was on the other side of some pipe pins. Like and some I'm, sucker rod. Sucker yeah, rod. Yeah. I'm pouring feed, and I hear, wham. And I was like, oh, God. And I turn around and look, and I see him laying across that lane, and I thought, oh, shit, he busted the gate open. So I tell you, I drop the feed, and I take off running around there. Well, then I look, and the gate's still shut. And I'm like, I almost started laughing because I thought he just hit it, and it scared him, and he tripped and fell backwards. And by the time I get up there to him, I, I'm like, I see this. Well, I look, and I'm like, are you all right? And he says, I think so, and blood just, I was like, oh, shit. Dude, I was And I look so... over, and there's two pieces of pipe going out of that damn gate, and that bull's got his head down looking at me through it. I mean, it's 
he'd crawl through it if he wanted to. And I was like, you sure you're okay? Yeah, I think so. Well, you might want to get up and get out of the way. <laughs> I, Why? I was like, because he can crawl through that hole right here, and I don't want to get hooked right now. <laughs> it was I, – I deserved what I got. JB had warned me, and then Ronnie Harden was standing there, and he was like, man, we were working some cows yesterday, and this cow busted through some sucker rod just like this right here. I, he was no more like – Tell, for some reason, it was just like he just happened to be telling that same story. And I was like, oh, really? And I threw that hay over, and this someone going bust. So, like, there was no excuse. But he I was, was the only one that, like, feeding wise, you know, most of the time they stay bunched up together. Right. Not yeah. him. Well, he was 500 something. That's 500. 500. 500 yeah. yeah. He uh, he got somebody down that day. It was a short Rambo. He was the, he uh, wrecked the back door out of Anthony's. Yeah. That's right. That's why I, I caught, that's why I, I tried to get I don't know if Quattro named him, but I wanted to name him five hundred backdoor assassin. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being just really relieved when I hit the ground that like it because the way it hit me right under my nose, like I was like, Man, I didn't break my nose. Quarter of an inch and you'd have lost your front teeth. I, oh, yeah. I didn't lose my my teeth and I didn't have a concussion. So like it's like because, you know, you get to a certain point in your life. And well, it's I like, thought that's what it did. It busted his nose because when he set up, it's just blood all right there. I thought it was coming from his nose. I couldn't tell. Well, once he got him, got out of the way, I moved and then moved them bull's pins. And he cleaned up and he come walking back in. <laughs> it was just slit right there. I, was like, I didn't have his mustache. Dude. You could see it. But I just hate at this point, it's like I'd really not rather add to another tally mark to the concussion column. You know, like – and oh, if no. I'm going to, I'd rather it be while I'm competing rather than feeding a bull in the back fence, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, let's make it at least worth our while, you know, get on a bronc or something. <laughs> that was the best ever, but not for you, evidently. But you were okay. <laughs> right. A few stitches. But everybody was like, how'd the bull fight go at Dale's? So I was like, well, ripped two back doors, broke one arm. Uh, oh, yeah, and Dale had to go get some stitches after he helped me feed. They were like, holy crap. I said, pretty safe to say we're probably not going to have a bullfighting back there again. I wouldn't mind having a bullfight back again. I think that we just need to we need to put better posts around the arena. We do not need to let Wes <laughs> drive the T-post. Drive the T-post. And then, and then like just. The blade's supposed to be in the ground, Wes. Yeah. I think I wouldn't mind having another one. I don't want, I would I don't necessarily want a big crowd there. Yeah. That's that's my only deal. I just don't want a big crowd. Well, hell, if they get out, you're. Sh- yeah. But usually. Well, I got. Pi- I don't know if you've been here. I got pipe and I got everything. But you're saying if they get out in the crowd, yeah. right? Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, because like when we did the bullfights at the PBR finals, when they had them at AT and T Stadium, they did it. You know, we did the bullfights where they had the mini bull riding. Yeah. And I told, told them, I said, look, they were worried about them getting out. I said, the only thing you got to worry about them fighting bulls is picking the panels up and going under it. Right. Like usually one will pick it up, and if the another one goes under it. Right. And I said, so the best thing to do is go to, like, the state and get them concrete barriers with the the uh, rebar loop yeah. in the top. And that's how we do the, the arena panels. You know, it's solid where they can't see out. Yep. People can still, you know, watch, but – we put them barriers every so often and ratchet strap them panels to them barriers, barriers so they can't pick them up. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's – well, see, I got six – Um, I got six – the arena lights, you mm-hmm. know, they got – dude, that's what we would need to do is do it at night. night. Them LEDs, dude, oh, yeah. it looks bad to the bone mm-hmm. in that arena at night. Like, I mean, you, you were there. bright lights. But, yeah. like, dude, that would be bad to the bone. But it looks cool in the day just because it's out in a pasture, and, you know, that's kind of a neat backdrop. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> them bullfighters, I kind of, what are you bringing? Oh, they're all fresh. Yeah. Oh, oh cool. they're fresh. Oh, cool. They're thinking, oh. like, calves fresh. And I that's show the other thing. It's like full-grown bulls that were five-year-olds that had never been fought. You might have some guys not show up after that. <laughs> it, I, it's not going to be – it's not going to be – a matter of like the arena and whether Dale wants to do it. It's going to be, are you going to have any bullfighters show up? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, no, that was, which one do you get more excited about hauling fighting bulls or hauling bucking bulls? Either bulls in general. I like watching the fighting bulls. Yeah. But I like watching them bucking bulls. Them bulls of mine are pretty mean too. So 
You gonna get some bucking horses? I don't know. Well, speaking of bucking horses, this guy wants to know how can I start bull slash bronco riding? <laughs> Drop the O first. <laughs> you go to the Ford dealership and buy one. <laughs> <laughs> Is college education important? Depends on what you're doing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're riding bulls, it's not necessarily a must have. Yeah. I kind of skipped that whole scene. What keeps you going when you're going through hard times? Want to win. You ride yourself into a slump, and there's only one way to get out. You ride yourself out. Yeah. Keep getting on. Just keep getting on. Yeah. Let me find one or two more of these. You got any last questions, Donnie? Leroy? Texas is great, but do you miss the Carolinas any? No. <laughs> not at all. What do you What do you like better about Texas? Way more cowboy stuff to do out here. Yeah, that's true. And they're not, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people in Texas, but not everybody's stacked on top of each other. Yeah. North Carolina is not a very big state, and there's yeah. a pile of people. So there's houses everywhere you turn. Yeah. How do you deal with hate? Hate? Yeah. I don't give a shit. <laughs> they either like me or they don't. Yeah. It makes no difference to me. Yeah. My life still goes on. <laughs> yeah. Did you play any sports in high school? Uh, not in high school. I quit playing sports when I got to high school because, you know, most of the games were on the weekends and I was always going to bull ridings or rodeos. So I played baseball and football before I got into high school, though. This is a pretty interesting question from a mom. How can I take? How can I talk my thirteen-year-old out of bull riding? Don't talk him out of it. Yeah. If you tell him he can't do it, he's just going to go behind your back and do it. So, yep. You better take him and let him do it on his own while you're there, so you can watch and be there. And he'll either figure out whether it's for him or not. But if just the same way with, you know. They didn't want me riding bulls. Right. And the guy said, you better let him because he's going to do it. Right. Either he's going to do it with you there watching him or he's going to go behind your back and sneak off and do it when you're not around. So what would you rather do, watch him do it or not know he's doing it? Yeah. And to help him make the decisions like, yes. ah, we're going to go to this school. This is the one that I've found is the best. Yeah. Yeah, I remember go there was the best a, instruction. There was a guy, I was – 15 or 16 and I was entering IPR rodeos in North Carolina and this guy come over there and he had asked me if I had whatever bull it was his and uh, I said yes sir I think that's what I got and he said well son you might want to think about not getting on him <laughs> for what he said well he is he really bucks and he's really mean I said well you worry about your bull and I'll worry about me well then he went and found my mom <laughs> And was trying to talk her into telling me. She's like, you can't tell him what to do. Like, he's going to, you know. I won the rodeo on him. I mean, I <laughs> spurred the piss out. It pissed me off that he had even come and say that to me. Right. And uh, he did hook the shit out of me, though. Like he, <laughs> he was not lying about it being mean because he was really mean. I'll give you that, <laughs> and, old man. <laughs> well, then a couple weeks later, I see him. And he's like, you got, it was like his best bull that he had. That say, and he goes, I'm not saying a word to you. I rode him on the bull riding too. He said, I'm never saying anything to you ever again. I wonder what I said, that old man thinks now. Yeah. Uh, golly, that's funny. This is an interesting question. Can there be a fat cowboy? Yeah, they bulldog. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I think let's talk about bull riders. No. Like, what what's the biggest? guy you've seen like that could ride bulls like how overweight was he like 10 pounds or 30 pounds i don't know there there's been a few guys i've seen growing up just not in the pbr they could ride good but were bigger yeah but you know you just physics think about it what's easier to balance 140 pounds or 190 pounds right pretty simple yeah you get 200 pounds going in one direction it's kind of hard to stop it Man, that's what I told a guy the other day. I was like, I'm not trying to be a, the kind of guy that tells you that you can't do something. Like, I don't want to say you can't do something. Maybe you're the one – maybe you're the next J.B. Mooney. But 
you don't see a lot of like overweight bull riders. Oh yeah, I've told plenty of them at schools and things I've done. I'm like, look, if you want to do this, you better lose about fifty pounds. Yeah, and I ain't being an asshole. I'm telling you the truth. Like, right. you're not gonna go anywhere as big as you are. Right. We are also assholes, but when we say this, we're not purposely being. Yeah, yeah. Like we're I trying mean, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many total bulls do you think you've been on? I have no earthly idea. What did what What about like bull rides? Like how many? Uh, like when you go to them bull ridings? Like didn't you? Did it's been a couple of years, but I can't remember. Like on total bulls in the PBR, I can't remember. It was like sixteen hundred or something. I got on, and then, but that's not counting the practice bulls, the open bull ridings I'd go to, and all that good job. I don't know. I've probably been on. Three, four thousand bulls since I was yeah. thirteen. Probably. Definitely ten thousand hours worth. That's what they say it takes to be a professional. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, I knocked that out of the park before I was eighteen. Yeah. I got I got three or four more of these. Some of these are quick. Would you ever want to get married and have kids? Well, I am <laughs> married and have kids. So <laughs> if you could be any fruit, what fruit would you be? <laughs> fruit? I don't know. A fruit? Yeah, it says a fruit. I don't know. I don't eat fruit. All right. Last question. Where do you go mentally in the shoot? Where do I go? Yeah. In the shoot. <laughs> Where do you go in your mind? Where do you go mentally? Take my rap and nod. <laughs> I don't go anyway. Like, hey, everybody, I mean, that. that's the thing. You think long, you think wrong. Yeah. It's the same steps every time, no matter what boy you got. What he's doing in the shoot, same steps. Whether he's fighting the shoot or whether he's standing like a champ, you go through the same steps every time. Repetition. Once you do it enough, then it's just reaction. Yeah. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about anything. Now, right before I get in the shoots, I mean, I tell myself, you know, keep my chin down, stay square, and a few other things that I probably shouldn't mention. Right. Don't be a. Right. And, you know, don't quit. Have, have you? Other had, than that, when I crawl off in the shoot, it's game on. That's all. That's business. Have you changed anything in your shoot procedure? Like any major change over the years? Like there's been nope. like everything's the same since day one. Yeah. I've always been the same. I've never wasted a whole lot of time in there, and I just take my rep, nod, and go. Yeah. The last question on there was, where do you get your hats? That'd be uh, American Hat Company. Yeah. A lot of time, most of the time, best best hat store, Fort Worth. Me and old, the wild man, Jagger, we managed to trip up there the other day saw and got that. us some new lids. for the Got him a felt, NFR. didn't he? Oh, two of them. Two of them. The man is styling. Yeah, he can be we hat have, whipping some bulls with it. We have those put in a box until <laughs> we go to the NFR. <laughs> I have not yet been able to teach him how to take care of a hat very good. Yeah. Like everything he rides, he's 90 points on and throws his hat. Yeah. And if he acts like he bucks off, he smashes his head on his leg, slaps his <laughs> leg. I'm like, what, what are you doing? Bucked off, I'm mad. Bucked off, I'm mad. <laughs> okay. Oh. What, um, well, last thing we'll end with, what, uh, what, what do you got for life advice, Donnie? Uh, take a chance, Columbus did. <laughs> That's what Tough Heatman said. We were doing a podcast with him the other day <laughs> at Rock and Roll. Take a chance, Columbus. Well, Panhandle. He's Panhandle man. Yeah. But uh, take a chance, Columbus did. You only get one of them. You better do it. Yep. What you got, Leroy? Wash your hands and say your prayers. Germs and Jesus are everywhere. <laughs> mm. uh, well, since in the spirit of all these people asking about bull riding, I would say find someone who is is where you want to be and then try to do what they're doing. Just advice to that's everybody though. It's not just bull riding. So just find somebody that JB is probably out of probably doesn't have a lot of room for interns. Do you need an intern? I don't know. I probably I don't know if a bull riding intern would want to come work for me. Yeah. <laughs> he better say one that's never he better be a he tough, better be a salty bastard. Because oh. <laughs> that's all we would do. Yeah. Bug bulls every day. Yeah. Because I got the bullfighter. Yeah, that's true. That's what you need, man. You need like a, you need a, a up and coming. So if you, if you want to 
learn how to ride bulls, find a way to to get with JB. But um, you better do it with uh, – you better, better have been you, on about better 75 head. You better sack up because a lot of mine don't stand very good and they got big bats and they're mean as hell. And there's and the, the guy flanking them is not going to be very compassionate. No. Yeah. Not at all. And if we do buck them, there's probably going to be you – and me and Colton, that's it. So Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky he's got a bullfighter. <laughs> yeah. That's just because he works for me. Yeah. Yeah. If he was, wasn't if he wasn't there, I'd make you get on with no bullfighter. It used to be Landon, now it's Colt. Yeah. What life advice do you have? I already said it, man. You oh only, you only get one up. of them. Oh, you only get one and of them. And sack up. You only get one of them, you better do it. Yeah. You only get one of them, you better do it. I'm gonna change mine. To what? Sack up. <laughs> that too buttercup now if you're passionate about something and you know it's something you want to do like JB started riding bulls when he's 12 he's 34 and he's one of the greatest ever if you're passionate about it do it like, yeah why not start at 12 yeah you know what I mean right but if you're not if 12 you're, yeah <laughs> you're well, even not if it's too now, old <laughs> no you're not <laughs> too old if you want to do it go do it there you know, are some people that excuses. legitimately ask that question you know like they're 35. Yeah. Am I too old? I mean, you could probably try it, but it's not going to go very good. Yeah. It's going to be a little once rocky. Once you hit 30, shit changes. You better bulls. you better have it figured out by the time yes, you're 30. because <laughs> you don't bounce near as good. You don't come back from injuries near as fast. <laughs> well, unless, you're, unless you're a fast healer, then you might be all right. Yeah. If you're interested in JB... Mooney merch, check out dalebrisby.com. Also, text JB Poster or Mooney Zone to 940 353 0890, and I'm going to let people know when um, these posters, signed caps, hit the web. So they're the ones that find out first. And, so. buy, and buy a lot of them because I got another load of pipe coming in to build <laughs> bullpens. So. That's uh that's a wrap. We're on to the next one, and the next one for JB Mooney is the NFR. Look out for him in Vegas. Old Nefer Selmar. When, when, when are we getting our posters? I don't need a poster. Uh, <laughs> we can make you one. Thirty-four year old NFR rookie. We do need to do uh calendars. We need to do a JBDB calendar and a the, calendar. Are you up yeah. for rookie of the year? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no. Oh no! You yeah you had uh I, I bought my PRCA card in '09. I guess first you. time. Yeah. Um, my rookie time at the I NFR. You. I didn't know. thirty four years old. Rookie NFR. Yeah, yeah, yeah first yeah. NFR. So, well, we're on to the next one. Pow pow, it's rodeo time.